Hi everybody, welcome to Gunshots, and um, this week I have a guest. Um, after much um, uh, after much request, um, we are going to do a video about cleaning of guns, and um, the most fastidious and most um, knowledgeable, shall we say, person that I've, I've ever met so far um, that knows about cleaning guns is this chap here, William Moore. Will is um, one of the, uh, the staff in the gun room at Bywell, and his gun is literally the cleanest gun I've ever seen. So I thought he was going to be my expert, and um, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, what we thought we'd do is we'd run through tools, chemicals, and then we'll actually run through process. So we'll start with tools. Um, first one, and this is the one I picked up from you guys, is this, the um, sacrificial cartridge box. Um, I tend to throw this on the floor, and then when I clean the gun, especially with the, uh, with the, with the brush, um, this catches all of the crap that comes out at the end, and it means it doesn't end up all over my kitchen, and it saves me from getting beaten to death by my wife. Um, so that can go down there. Um, Tools-wise, do you want to take us through the yes. various? There's a few simple things. Um, the main thing being the rods. So as, well, as Lloyd's got here, we've got the Paradox. This is ideal. A lot of people make the mistake of using this one first but it's ideal for polishing once you've taken most of the residue out the barrel and it keeps it a bit cleaner as well. Um, with regards to the tools themselves, I mean most of the time you can have this all on one rod with your different attachments, but Lloyd's got here the jag, which is used obviously for gripping your cloth as it goes through the barrel. Um, what I do, me being um, not quite as high tech, I use a phosphor bronze when it's normally worn down and just put the cloth over the top of that, which grips the barrel nicely and it tends to last for a long time. Um, the other major tool is the Payne Galway, um, used obviously for removing the deeper deposits, the foul and the lead foul and the plastic foul and the chamber. Um, so they're the major sort of tools that you So really in terms use. of the difference between a Payne Galway and a standard phosphor, phosphor, obviously the Payne Galway is much more dense. Yeah, it's a lot thicker of a brush, mm -hmm. so it would get a better grip and basically through a lot less effort it will loosen mm. those deposits. And I find that they are a bit more resistant to directional changes, like you can do a little scrub just yeah. in the force and cone that's without... Right. I've, I just, just my personal that's preference. That's the only reason I, I use these is to, to use them as a, as a cheap jag, basically. Right. Fair enough. So, um, so with regards to the rod, that's the main thing. Um, I have a little few things which most people probably don't, but handy to use. Pipe cleaners are ideal for under the rib and in the ventilation if the gun's been wet for drying. So the other thing I use, which I take from my partner, is these cotton buds. Um, obviously, she uses them for removing makeup. I use them for getting all the small um, areas of the gun under the ejectors places like that, right. um, which is ideal because obviously a few wipes dirty, throw it in the bin and another 399 to go at. So Fair dues. But apart from that, everything else fairly standard. Chemicals. Of course, the chemicals. So we have a few different bits and bobs here. Legia, um, fantastic universal spray. There is different permutations of it, different manufacturers, but it's a general spray and lubricant ideal for on the outside of the barrels of the guns getting wet outside of the action inside the action anything like that with this new formula as well it doesn't matter if it gets on any other wood anything like that but it's ideal like i say if the gun's being wet it's going to stop any water getting any any uh, small areas there as well your general gun oil which i know lloyd likes a little bit thicker than anything like the spray and that's ideal for lubricating the flat areas mating surfaces things like your jeweled surfaces on Berettas. I tend um, to use that for just on the ejectors. I'll put a little, mm -hmm. uh, a thin smear on the ejectors and then I use grease on the bearing surfaces. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to, like I say, areas, sensitive areas like that keeps the lubrication. The other very important thing and, and the reason why a lot of people struggle with cleaning the gun is to try and put this in the bore with the brushes, which doesn't always achieve the best results. But once you've pushed through most of that, the Philips being a solvent, again, there's other manufacturers, mm -hmm. Beretta do a good one. Um, that's used to spray into the chambers, sit for five or ten minutes, that'll loosen the deposits. Have a cup um, of tea or a glass of whiskey, yes, depending exactly. on the time of day. Exactly, <laughs> even in the whiskey is always a good option. And that, that'll loosen those, so then when you go in with the Payne Galway, it then makes it a lot easier to move This it. is just, I mean I ran out of Legia last week and I only had this, um, so this is VP90, again a sort of a multi-purpose spray. Um, this one that comes in the massive tin, um, it has a a fair bit of power behind it. You don't have to get a, a good blast off them, but um, to be honest, these are pretty much interchangeable to me. I don't know how you feel. Yeah, exactly. There's yeah. a lot of different versions, but all doing the same sort of thing. 
And then of course grease. Um, I have two kinds of grease. I used to use this Bisley grease, which is based on graphite. Um, but as you'll see, it's black. And the reason I stopped using it is because it's basically impossible to tell when it's dirty. Um, and it, 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 I think it makes your gun look a bit clotty mm, yeah. um, when you open the action that's full of that. So this is an engineering grease with PTFE that I buy from Bible. Um, and it was per recommendation from uh, Will and Paul in the gun room. And I find this stuff's great. Um, it's really uh, nice and clean and it, you get a um, you can put a good dollop on your uh, stub pins, etc., and on the lumps, and, and away you go. All right, so the only other thing really to mention is just some random cloths. Um, I tend to keep an oily rag and a, and a clean rag for doing um, various bits during the, the cleaning process. Um, and that's about it, and obviously two before. So let's go on, talk about process. Uh, we've got a, oh, uh, it is worth mentioning at this point, um, I also have this, um, a magic ball. Uh, you may have seen if you uh, have been looking, there's a, a chap that has knocked these out and um, he's given me one to, uh, to test. Um, when well, fair, I paid for it, he didn't give me it. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll do a little bit of a, um, uh, a run through with this as well, uh, although it is going to be quite noisy. Um, all right, so we've got a selection of guns to clean. Um, we've got a, 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 a Guarini, which has a, a chrome lined bore, um, and then we've got a Parazzi and my Krieghoff, which uh, don't have chrome lined bores. Um, and they're slightly uh, different in terms of the amount of effort you've got to put to clean them. Uh, Will and I were just talking earlier. Krieghoffs, um, I find mine very, very easy to clean. The Guarini, on the other hand, uh, for whatever reason, the shape of the forcing cones, definitely you have to put a bit more effort in because they definitely tend to pick up a bit more fouling. So we're going to start with the Guarini. Um, we will uh, start by obviously checking the gun is empty and safe. We'll take the fore end off. And then the barrels. Separate everything out. Just hand the uh, action to the side. And uh, do you normally start with the action or do you start with the barrels? Or? The thing I just to mention before going further, mm -hmm. forend, I see this a lot of the time, people put the forend down like this, um, which ends up inevitably at some point rolling off the back of the car, the kitchen floor, you know, table onto the floor. So I'll always recommend putting the forend down like this and it doesn't go rolling away. Mm. Well, one thing we didn't mention is, of course, I am shooting, uh, I, I do this on a, uh, this is a barrier mat I got from eBay. So it's a, I can't remember what size this is, but you can get all different sizes. And it's pretty well, it's, um, it's on like a rubber backing with a, a wool top. It protects the uh, table from, and the gun barrels from being scratched or whatever. And it's just a sacrificial object. I've also used towels, I've used all sorts. And um, over time they just get binned, but these are so cheap, they're, uh, they're pretty good to use. Mm -hmm. So, what about you again? First thing I would say, um, and again, a lot of people make the mistake of going in with a brush straight away. What you want to do is, obviously the bores are fairly dirty, they've got the build-up and the loose powder, and I always think it's the best to remove the loose deposits first um, without taking up too much effort. So I would always, first thing, again, make sure this is in the, the box, because otherwise you get wrong. Off your partner inevitably, just a little squirt in each barrel. And then what I would do is get, Lloyd has his technical jag, I would have my brush, could you pop a you wanna, bit of... Are you a wrapper or a, or a stuffer? Uh, normally wrap, wrap's right. always a good, uh, good option. And then that would just go through each barrel. Again, on the other one there. So once that's been done, you'll notice that most, again, always check this up with the light, most of the loose deposits in the barrel have been removed. But what you will find is in this section here, which is just beyond your force and cones, you've got a little bit of buildup of either your plastic um, or your fiber residue, or a little bit of lead in sometimes as well. And that's when we would then go into using the solvent in combination with the brush. So at this stage, what I would do is get your solvent because you've removed most of the loose deposits. You don't need a lot, just a little squirt in each barrel. And then what I normally do is go over the remainder of the gun, such as the action, while that's working its way into there. And like I say, once you come back to this, it makes it a lot easier to then remove that. It also smells really nice. If you've ever used Philips, um, it does have a distinct sort of pear, pear drop smell. Aroma. <laughs> Which is not unpleasant to have Which in the makes kitchen. You hungry. 
<laughs> All right, so do, I mean, do you tend to do much what, with the fore end iron? Do, not a lot normally, just again, as Lloyd will show you, there's little bits of, depends on how much grease you like to use, little deposits and thing, hmm. things in there. I would just usually use, is this your dirty yep. cloth? Yeah, just the dirty cloth and just remove any of that because as time any grease or lubricant on anything will always pick up little bits of grit, filings, things like that. And turns so, into a rubbing compound. Exactly. So for the time it takes, the forend, again, you haven't got a major surface area, but it's always good if you can get that off there. Um, the action, which again, a lot of people unfortunately neglect, but have left over time again, filings and things like that. Now, if it's been a wet day, I would always give that just a little, as you can see with this top, it's quite a quite a spray. It is, alright. And just just basically take all of that. It doesn't take any sort of time. You know, you don't need to be gentle in any way. Just you're removing anything off the action face, anything on the corners. Any game shooters out there, you will know. After the end of a day's game shooting, you're bound to find twigs, leaves, <laughs> um, feathers, bugs, spiders. Things, <laughs> things get into there. So it's always good to just take that out. So again, for the sake of a few seconds, again, if that's been left wet, um, not a good thing, because if it's gone straight in the cabinet, you will get moisture, which then could cause future problems. So again, just removing that off there. Um, the only other thing to really do, uh, and it makes it a lot easier again, if it's been a dry day, is just to wipe over, and it's something a lot of people forget about again, is the outside of the action. Even in the summer, when people think there's no issues, you can get salt off the sweat in your hands. I'm mm. sure you've had it, you know, you get a hot day and you don't realize, but you do touch the, the gun. And uh, if that salt and things is left there, it can actually cause corrosion. Um, a lot of people think, how has my gun corroded in the summer? I haven't been out, but it can be through the sweat. So again, it doesn't take much. If it's been a, a wet day, I might use a little touch of oil, but generally just something sort of nice and clean. And again, removing fingerprints, any sort of, you know, moisture. The other area as well, if it has been wet, is under the top lever and the safety catch. You can't get moisture build up in there. So just make sure, you know, you either go through or give it a little dot of oil. Um, the other place that people forget is in and around here. Again, wet days are the worst. Just make sure you get into there and remove any moisture. If you're lucky enough to have something like a DT11 or a Parati, you can actually drop your trigger group up, which is handy if you've gotten drenched on a wet day. Mm -hmm. So again, there's not, not a massive amount. Um, a lot of people wouldn't bother, but again, external services, just things like that, just make sure it's all white and clean. So, so we'll get a we'll get a close up here, but you can see in the bottom of the um, in the bottom of the action, there are a few bits of unburnt powder and whatnot there. Um, now I tend to use actually have a um, a, a little quarter. Uh, like a one-inch paintbrush mm. that I use to just make sure I can sort of sweep stuff out with. But I'm guessing this is what you use the Q-tips for. Occasionally, if you get a, and I mean I don't know if you can see that again. Lloyd may get a close-up later. I will. There's bits and bobs here, so every maybe two or three times, you know, if you've been clear shooting again, you're not as likely to get as much dirt. But just, you know, you can. I mean, that's just one in a one corner. You can see there. Um, so just, just remove any, any sort of build up because the other thing is over time it could not that it's going to cause a big malfunction but it could jam bits up or things like that. So you just want to remove any and if you're doing that each time it makes it a lot easier mm -hmm. in the long run. So that's all that really is, is. There's not too much on the action. It's just making sure that the main deposits are removed from the inside and the external services are, are sort of free from any um, residue, moisture or fingerprints. Okay. Now, do you normally put grease on the action or do you put it on the I would the normally barrels? always generally, because people always ask this, um, I would always loop what we would term the knuckles. Again, this is your major bearing surface. Now, all guns, although the action is slightly different, um, have the same sort of idea behind them. So it doesn't need to be a massive amount because some people do over lubricate guns. Just a little bit on each face there. The fore end doesn't really require any lubrication because that does mate up to there and any excess will just be squeezed out which when you put the gun together at the end you can just wipe that away with a nice bit of toilet toilet paper there and, and remove that but that's all the action really needs. Some manufacturers may have little bites such as Brownlands and Miracles, a little smear of grease on there doesn't do it any harm but the remainder I would lubricate up once I've finished cleaning the barrels 
will then go through the bits to generally lubricate on there again different models and manufacturers. Do you ever, I mean I used to do it on my blazer because obviously they have a similar lock up to this one where you've got the bottom of the, mm -hmm. bottom of the uh, lump or the monoblock. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to put a little dob of grease. Yes that can often help. Um, we've seen it quite a few times in Brownings where Because sometimes you get it a little bit sticky when you're popping it sticky, open. Yeah. It's generally caused if it's been dry and a combination if, that, if it hasn't been cleaned very well right. that bottom bite it can sometimes cause a little bit of issues with that but no like i say not too much lubrication because then obviously it's going everywhere okay so yes cool all right so that's the action sort of sorted um i guess the barrels have probably had enough time yeah, now the to barrels soak have had enough time there to soak so we're going to the galway now yep yeah, that's right so the solvent's done it's working soaked so this is when we're going now you would normally be s scrubbing the main portion of the top section the top few inches there and um, working the, the, the brush back and forwards yep from the chamber into the force and cone yep and then pushing the rod down the reason we do this as well is it just stops any mucka residue coming back over because if you pull it back up through the bore and um, it obviously goes under the ejectors on the action face as well so it's always best if you can to keep it going one direction down over yes sorry And you know, two or three passes? Yeah, two or three passes normally, and then we'll have a look and see. Um, as long as you've gotten most of the, um, the fouling out, then that's the main thing. So once we've done that, we'll then go to the jag and get our cloth. So now all the deposits have been loosened, we we'll now want to push those out the bowl, and then hopefully, if we've done our job correctly, we should see a nice clean bore. So I've done the top barrel, we'll do the bottom there as well. And do you normally do a couple of passes of each? Um, normally, I normally have a, after the first pass of each one, I'll have a look and see how it's looking. So if we had a little bit more that I saw, um, I would go back in with a little bit of solvent in the brush because the way I look at it is if you push a few clap patches and waste them and you know it's fairly dirty you need to get back in there again so and in terms of what you're looking for when you look down the barrels mm -hmm. now um it's funny you, i bring guns into the gun room and say oh you know, how clean this is mm. and uh, oftentimes you're like oh. um you're tending to sort of concentrate yeah. your eye on the area around the force and call that's right those streaks. A, a lot of people make the mistake of looking past the bore looking yeah. up here which which, which, which yeah this bit doesn't really get any because you imagine if your cartridge is firing here any any of the deposits uh, you know when they first got the heat and, and rapid velocities it's burning onto it here this part it's fairly easy traveling um so that's where you get any of your real stubborn uh fouling on there so you want to try if you can when you're looking at the bores try and get a nice light um, cast your gaze back if you can down to here. I know it sometimes isn't natural, but cast it there. And something that you've easily glanced over can suddenly become apparent that you know it, it hasn't been cleaned out properly. So always look back there when you're fairly happy with this is clean. Um, as Lloyd mentioned earlier, uh, I would normally just go back in with a few patches until it's coming out nice and clean. Patches are cheap, guns are expensive, let's face it. Exactly, that's the way to do it. So um, for the sake of taking an extra bit of time, it, uh, it is well worth it in the long run. I don't know about you, but I, I, I quite enjoy cleaning my gun. I find I, I clean it every time I use it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I find it, it's just a nice, after you've been shooting, it's nice it to is. spend the afternoon. With it's it. a good way as well, and that sounds a bit silly, but um, to really inspect your gun and look over it. Yeah. If you've got it into pieces, you know, you're obviously looking when you're cleaning bits, various bits and places. Um, if there's anything that's gone wrong, if there's something missing, you know, if you've had something which has snapped off, where if you weren't cleaning it, you would find that fairly hard to pick up. So it's ideal, you know, you're having a general look over when you're cleaning it. And hopefully if there is something that's wrong or some damage that's occurred, you know, you can spot that and um, before it gets any worse or, you know, if you want to get it rectified, you know, so, um, so yes. Fair enough. So now that you're happy that the barrels are clean, mm -hmm. um, I'm, we're going to reassemble the gun and I'm guessing mm -hmm. greasing the, uh, the various mm -hmm. components. So mm -hmm. what's your process there? Well, the next bit, now the internals of the bore is clean, mm -hmm. um, would be, if you look at this part of the action, 
which obviously, um, or the barrel, sorry, this is generally termed the monoblock, this section here. Um, various manufacturers are different, but the general way is you've got your, you know, your main hinging surface with a flat surface, that can pick up a bit of dirt and, and residue. So I always give that a nice clean off. Again, um, you know, every few times I may then get one of the cotton buds and get into some of the, you know, places which are harder to reach. If it's been a wet day, again, a dose of something like the Legia or the Napier will be ideal. You know, it will help dispel any water. So again, that just that just wants a wipe over. Now the other part as well, once you've totally finished with using either the brush or the jag, um, this picks up a lot of muck, partly from cleaning, but mainly due to shooting, you know, powder residue and things. So as you can see, so there's recesses where the head spacing yes, on the um, on that's right. The other the other places around that rim that picks up a fair bit of stuff. Um, so just again, get your dirty cloth and just give that give that a wipe. If it's been wet, it doesn't hurt. As you can see there, you can reach under them sort of areas um, and give that a clean out. The, the Garinis are actually one of the harder ones because they sit quite low. Mm. Manufacturers like Berettas and Pratis with them being um, spring loaded actually sit nice and proud, which allows you to get under there. But yeah, just taking any any um, sort of unburned parts and things off that. So that's nice and clean there and ready to grease up for putting back together. Any tips on, this is a really common one I see quite a lot, um, this area here, especially across the top on mm -hmm. this on this face of this the, uh, the breech, um, tends to pick when when you close the gun, any sort mm -hmm. of crap in there tends to get crushed, mm -hmm. and it does tend to stain. Any tips mm -hmm. on cleaning that? Um, yeah, there's a few different ways you can do it. Uh, one of the ways, which sounds quite primitive, but works very well, is to get some very fine wet and dry. But the important thing is, a lot of people try and use either their thumb or something like that. You want something nice and solid and flat. Now, what I actually use occasionally is something like a placemat, wrap it around and tape it. And what you want to do is just put a little bit of oil, something like the Express oil will be ideal and you would just pop it onto them, pop it on the wet and dry and all you would do is work that and because it's nice and flat it's going to be nice and even and that just polishes that top section. Mm. The same as areas like on here, see if you've put it away and it's been slightly damp you can get some either tarnishing or you know a little bit of corrosion. Mm. If you've got this again you can flat it nicely and it keeps it all nice you know you don't get any low points where you put extra pressure around in any edges and that just works nicely so it's just simple it's just wet and dry a little bit of oil and something flat to actually polish that across i use a cork block you know mm. you can actually get those little sand in cork blocks for yes enough. well they're nice and flat and they're not there's a little bit of given them ideal and i mean the other i know this the green is slightly different but if you've got a conventional gun with the end that's another area which can sometimes right. pick pick marks up and again it's nice and flat so it could be polished and um, the last thing i do before i would grease that up is your chokes is to remove them um, give them a clean and, uh, and replace that with some some uh, some light grease. lubricant. Some people like to use oil, some people like to use grease. It's that a million dollar question, which one's better? There's not, there's no right or wrong answer. Um, some people feel that the oil doesn't get a good enough hold and doesn't collect as much. I prefer oil. Lloyd, I think, uses grease. I use grease, yeah. Um, I think it's fine if you use a lot of grease or excess grease, it can get in the threads and make it a bit mucky. But in some ways, that isn't a bad thing because it means when you clean it, you are removing all that the um, all, all the nasties out there. So once those have been put into place, it's ready to grease this end up and pop the gun back together. Job done. Um, do you tend to, I, I don't know about you, but I always put a, a very thin layer of a sweep of oil on the barrel, yes. give it a quick wipe, mm -hmm. and then I put it away actually holding the woodwork. Yes. So when the last thing, when it goes into the cabinet, I've actually helped put it in using holding only the wood. Mm -hmm. I'm being a bit finicky here, but if I've put a little thin layer of oil on the barrels, the last thing I want is then fingerprints being left on there from... Yeah, uh, that's quite correct. A little, th little film oil is always good. I mean, um, we always have an oily cloth as well, both in the gunroom made home, Lloyd as well. Mm -hmm which is ideal. I actually have a separate one just for the barrels, which is, is sort of fully impregnated. But as Lloyd says, a good dash over there. Now, as I mentioned and briefly touched on earlier, if you've had a very wet day, which in the UK happens fairly regularly, unfortunately, um, 
you've got these ventilation places and under the rib which are very you'd think they'd manufacture these just to annoy you when you want to clean them um, which is where I use them they're very handy they're ideal and if you put a little bit of oil on it's going to help remove any moisture and a quick blast with that will get any sort of raindrops things like that under there but even on a dry day as Loy says a little flash of oil wiping it down with a cloth removing any marks is ideal I just don't like putting away barrels that are shiny on it. Finicky. Yeah, exactly. Nice and nice and shiny. Alright, so do we want to throw it back together? Yeah, that's right. So we will get we prefer the nice clear grease. So a little dollop in the required places. Again each gun's slightly different. If you're not sure you can always Ask your local ground or refer to the the book as to where you should be greasing it. Any tips on uh, reassembling guns or anything? Um, make sure you've had plenty of practice because we see a lot of people who, you know, make sure you're confident because when you're learning, the classic thing is people whack into the wall or the car. So just make sure you're familiar with putting it together, preferably doing the room with plenty of space as well. Um, and just pop that together. So the barrel monoblock's been greased, the action's already been greased. So we'll just replace the fore end there. As you can see, there's a little bit of lubrication and grease oozing out of there. So I normally just shut the gun a few times, remove any excess, and then just with your cloth, or a little bit of toilet roll, just remove that there. And anywhere on the barrels that you feel's got any fingerprints on, just give those a wipe. And there we go, ready to go back in the cabinet for next time. Okay, so um, we've seen uh, Will's um, sort of traditional technique with um, a great deal of care. Yes. I love the way uh, Will cleans guns, he's really uh, meticulous. Um, but now I want us to do um, a quick look at the Magic Ball. Um, these barrels, these are mine, this is my Creek Off. Um, we have pre treated these, so rather than running you through the whole process again, um, Will, you rotted it very briefly with um, a patch with some oil on and then gave it a treat with the uh, pear flavoured uh, Phillips. Phillips and it's had a little soak so it's now ready for when we, what we would normally do now is give it a good rodding with the paint Galway. What we're going to do is give it a rodding with the, um, the magic ball. Um, it's going to be pretty loud so the audio is probably going to be pretty awful for this bit um, but um, let's see where we go. Um, I'm recommended from the chap that makes it that you hold the barrels with something because they do get kind of hot. Um, and I'm going to pop the ends of the barrels in the um, uh, in the box, although I can't actually reach the end of the barrels. This is only going to be treating the uh, the top part where it gets the dirtiest. Um, so we'll feed the uh, the brush in. So you've got a brush section and a um, a mop section, and then um, off we pop. Um, I obviously was concentrating on the uh, with the wire brush section there on the parts of the barrel that are going to get the dirtiest, which is the forcing cone. Um, so spending a little bit more time on that bit. We'll do the top part. Okay, and that's it. So this doesn't replace um, all of the effort. It is just basically giving you. A bit of a shortcut around the uh, the rotting section. Um, what I'll now do is give it a quick polish to get any residue out because it does tend to loosen up any plastic that's in there um, with the Paradox. Just a couple of passes and then we'll give it to Will to check and we'll give it, we'll get, the, <laughs> we'll get the expert opinion on it, what he thinks. Let's see if it's good, it's traditional. Clean, it's clean. There you go. It's hot. <laughs> yeah, it's worked well. It's removed all the all the bits that you would in the traditional method and probably made it a damn sight easier. There you go, so the Magic Ball, um, I've seen a lot of debate about them but to be honest I think it's actually not a bad tool at all. I tend to use it, if I use it, my gun I find a little bit easier to clean um, than my, my wife's. My wife's Garini because of the forcing cones tends to pick up a lot of stuff. Um, so I tend to use it on hers just to save me a bit of time and it does work very very well. Um, that's kind of it for um, the two different kinds of cleaning processes, but what we can talk about briefly is the difference between uh, chrome lined and non chrome lined balls. So, my wife, uh, the Creek, the, the Garini, does have a chrome lined ball. Um, they are a bit more resistant, and you can sort of, I won't say, treat them, neglect them, but, neglect them, but 
you, you don't have to be as careful. Yeah. Um, Whereas Krieghoff and Parazzi, certainly, they are, um, uh, I believe it's just the... It's just the, the chamber. chamber. Chrome line. That's correct. The chambers are chrome lined, but not the ball itself. Yeah. Um, and that requires a bit more care. So the final step that I would do with my gun that I wouldn't do with my wife's is just to lightly oil a patch and pass that through each barrel so I've got a very fine um, layer of oil inside usually if I'm storing the gun for any length of time but then you've got to remember when you shoot it if you get it out make sure that you then run it again with a dry patch and get any oil residue out because what you don't want to do is shoot the gun with oil in the barrels why not Will? Well I have heard people do this before and it can actually sort of burn and stain onto the, the bore if it is left in not the best thing mm. So if you can, remove it before you shoot it. Okay. So um, I'm going to uh, finish cleaning this up, mm -hmm. grease it up, stick it back in the cabinet and job's done. Um, Easy as up. Yeah. So um, thank you very much for coming, Will. You're it's been uh, It's been an education. Hope you guys have enjoyed it and uh, have learnt a few things. Please, um, if you get a chance, take a look at um, the rest of my videos, which are, uh, are going to be a link about here-ish. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> if you like, click about here, <laughs> where, <laughs> where you'll be able to subscribe to the channel. And um, I shall see you next time. Thanks very much to Thank you. Uh, Will from Bible. Thank and, you for having uh, us. Thank you next time.